seeing someone. I am. It's someone very famous. It's somebody very special. I don't want to embarrass her because she's she's looking at me right now. Yeah. <laughs> you were diagnosed with MS. Yes, I was, yeah. What was the first thing that went through your head when they told you that? I would, well, the first thing was, well, why did I even bother getting sober? <laughs> Welcome, RuPaul! Welcome to the show! Everybody say love! love. Everybody say love. love! All right, you better work, Miss Summer Test Run! <laughs> yeah, you guys, we are doing a... Summer test run, it is in full effect right now. And if you like what you see, go tell your mama, tell your mama, tell my I said hi. <laughs> Spread the word on social media, because we want to keep this thing going. All right, now it's time for my slay of the day. Because y'all know I was watching you work the runway, right? OK? OK, here it is. These two ladies just owned it. They are right here. Come on up here. <laughs> Here. Watch your step. Come on over here. Give me that mic. Give me that mic now. Come on over here. All right, y'all. Y'all came together, right? Yes. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Charlotte from Bakersfield. From Bakersfield. Oh, you get made it here in the nick of time. Where are you from? Destiny from Los Angeles. From La Destiny from Los Angeles. Y'all turned this runway out. I love every minute of it. You ready to do it again? Yes. All right, go on over there. I'm going I'm to hit the music, and y'all going to slay the runway. OK? All right, y'all, hit the music. Here we go. Come on, let's see it. excited for our first guest. We've got a presidential hopeful in the house. All the way from New Jersey, welcome Senator Cory Booker. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's all extraordinary way, to be here. All the way here. from New Jersey. Yes, yes. How I, often do you get out to California? Uh, my mom is from L.A., so, and then I went to Stanford, so I, I've been in California, come to California since I was a little kid. Really? Yes. Now, I want to talk about how, how we can get young people excited about voting. There's so much apathy out there. How do we get, because they're our only hope, you know? Right. Well, first of all, let's talk about everybody. Okay. I mean, and, and, and you, one of the things I love about your philosophy is, you know, King said it so eloquently. We, it's not the vitriolic words and violent actions of the bad people. It's the silence and inaction of the good people. Yes. And so all of us have to take responsibility for that. And I've been inspired by this generation of, of young people after uh, the Parkland shootings to see them bring a level of activism that really harkens back to the activists of the civil yeah. rights movement, saying we're not gonna wait for older people to get their act together. We're gonna do it ourselves. Yeah. And so this is one of those times where all of us need to take responsibility for energizing the people in our lives uh, to understand that there's so much at stake in this uh, coming election. Do you remember? Yes. Uh, who was the first president you voted for? Oh my gosh, it was 1988. And I was a Stanford student and I voted in the then Democratic primary for a guy named Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson, yes, how about first, that? First vote I cast was for Jesse Jackson. Yeah, I think my first was for um, Dwight Eisenhower was my yes, first. Yes. But this is what people don't realize. You vote every day with the dollars you spend. Thank you. Yes, with the things you Thank buy. Thank you. You know, and, and again, that's the same thing. Often we're doing things with our dollars, supporting things that, we, that don't sit with our values. Yeah. Like how was this clothing made? Or is the food I'm eating? How is that, where that's coming from? We, every single day we are endorsing things that we should be much more conscious about because with climate change, with uh, people struggling getting paid sub subhuman wages, mm -hmm. uh, we should try to do things with our dollars that reflect our values, uh, whether it's the food we eat or the clothing we wear. It, we really try to be in line with who we are and the values we have. That's a good point. You know, uh, is there a website where they list all of the, um, the good companies and all the companies that are 
are naughty companies, well, you know? Well, there is, but the, I always say the most common way people give up their power is not realizing they have it in the first place. Yeah. And so we all are, everybody in this new age, we're all, we all syndicate media. So what do you put on your platforms? Do you have a favorite company out there that, that represents your values that you've done the research on? Don't just yeah. go someplace. Understand that every day you have a choice to make, to accept things as they are or take responsibility for changing them. But often people allow their inability to do everything to undermine their determination to do something, something small. Yeah. Just by posting, hey, I, I looked at the line, I did a little research, here's a clothing company that I really like, or here's today, we see lots of issues going on. People might not agree with what's going on in Alabama, which I believe uh, the legislation they've passed is a full-on assault on human dignity. <laughs> but instead of us talking about it, give a dollar to a local organization doing something. Always do something, because in life, I always tell people it's not, the, it's not the big things in life, the big moments. It's always every day the biggest thing you can do is a small act of kindness, decency, or love. I heard that. Yeah. Thank you. What did you, uh, what did you study at Stanford? What's your degree in? My degree actually was in political science. Of course, yeah, yes. But, but I'll tell you, my best lessons at Stanford were outside of the classroom. I worked in uh, an area around East Palo Alto with kids where I found mm -hmm. my, my calling in life, which was uh, uh, to work in communities like the one I live in in Newark. I worked on a, on a suicide crisis hotline. Really? Which was profoundly eye-opening as a teenager to me, where you had people calling up. You know, you, we walk around, and this is why I say we need to extend more empathy to each other. We need to have a revival in our country of sort of grace because you never know what's going on a little bit under the surface. And sitting on that hotline and hearing uh, the stories of people coming out, for example, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the fear and, and, and the hurt and the self-judgment, uh, to hear people struggling with depression or body image issues. Um, for me, it was one of those times where I saw the true struggles we all go through, but also the beauty inherent in that, that, yeah. that, that we're, we're all struggling in this country. Absolutely. There's only one of us here. There really is. Yeah. And that's why it's important to tell your story yes. so that other people, people can know that they're not alone and that there is a solution. When you shine your light, you liberate others to shine theirs. Just driving here, there was a, a staffer, Kevin, in my car, who I hope you meet backstage, who was like telling me as a gay man what you meant for him to make mm -hmm. him have... Uh, not feel uh, all, the, all the messages we get to be not proud of who we right. are, that you're really to live your light, to be brilliant, to know that God didn't create you to fit in, but to stand out. Oh, hallelujah! Yes. And, and, yes. Yes. yes, and you liberate other people to do the same. Yeah. You're beautiful in that way, and I, yeah. I want to say thank you to you, because on LGBTQ issues, that we still live in a nation where 30% of LGBTQ youth report not going to school because of fear, that we still have a disproportionate level of our homeless youth, our LGBTQ youth, uh, where we still see uh, such discrimination. Most Americans don't know that we live in a nation where in most states, you could post your gay marriage on, 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 on your Facebook page, but you could still be fired just because of who you are with no legal recourse. Yeah. So, so for, for us to understand that we have to still talk about these issues, we, you know, justice, injustice anywhere, as King says, is a threat to justice everywhere. And, and we have to continue to understand that we are not who we say we are as a nation, liberty and justice for all, until we continue to fight these battles that are facing too many Americans of inequality and injustice. You're absolutely right. I, I, it's, it's frustrating, though, because we all, we all want to do something. We all think, how can we do something? Obviously, it starts with you. It starts with you, this person here. I, I try to, uh, I think the best way you make a difference in this world is number one, is try to live your values every single day and mm -hmm. be the change you want to see, as, as Gandhi would say. Uh, and this is why, again, what I, what I love about you is, you know, you don't have to attend every argument you're invited to. Uh, you, you don't have to sort of... Uh, uh, let other people's darkness make you dark. That's right. Um, uh, and, and if you, in fact, if you meet uh, a negativity with positivity, if you, my father told me there's two ways to go through life, son. You go through life as a thermometer or a thermostat. Uh -huh. The thermometer just reflects the world around you. But yeah. the thermostat, like you, is one of those people, when they walk in the room, they set the temperature. I love and, Papa's and, wisdom. Yes. That's great. Yeah. And that's what all of us have to do. You're absolutely right. Hey, we've got more with Senator Booker after this. Stay with us. told that you write love poems. I do. When do you have the time to do anything? When you have uh, someone in your life that inspires you as much as she does. What was it like having Ozzy Osbourne as your dad? I guess the quick answer is I don't know what it's like yeah. not to. 
Okay. All right, here I go. Come on. The paperwork is signed. Yeah. Oh. I am official. <laughs> official for what, sir? Official for running for president. Okay. Can't take it back now. Somebody grab that before he rips it off. <laughs> <laughs> we are back with New Jersey Senator and presidential candidate Cory Booker. Now, um, I know that you did that television show, Finding Your Roots, yes. with uh, Skip Gates. Yeah, amazing, amazing show. Uh, and he's a profound guy. And, you know, we can't bear fruit if we don't know more about what That's our roots right. are. And you know, at the end of the show, the, um, I actually I did it this summer. And at the end of that show, uh, they ask you, uh, they they because they have your DNA. Yes. They they tell you what person that they've interviewed or done uh, the thing with. Uh, they tell you what person you have roots with. Are that we, you are have we DNA. We have DNA are together. You I swear to you. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. He said. Because they take your DNA when they do the show. Yes. You have to do all this stuff that's uh, really gross and I'm not going to talk about. But um, <laughs> they take your DNA and they trace it back generation yes. to generation. And the person they said I have DNA with is State Senator Cory Booker. We are cousins. Yeah. Isn't that, we are cousins. It's amazing. Isn't that funny? Uh, not funny, it's beautiful. Yeah. So my, they, well, my family, they went back to, to Louisiana and tested the DNA of, of some white families and found my mom's first cousin. Because my grandfather's grandfather was a white man. Uh -huh. And we never knew the story, but yeah. Skip reunited this, this family, this black and white family, two branches of a tree, did not know we All were All my family's from Louisiana. Oh, wow, so yeah. that's why. Is it, where'd you get, who, anybody else have blue eyes in your family? Um, my mom. Your mom yes. has blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. Where did she grow up? My mom grew up here in LA. Yeah. She was born in Detroit. Um, and that's my mother right there. Uh -huh. My mom has a saying, she goes, she always embarrasses me now on the, on the presidential campaign trail because she goes, behind every successful child is an astonished parent. I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe this guy would not make his bed. <laughs> not even he mowed the lawn late. No, so, so uh, she's an amazing human being, civil rights activist. She helped organize a march on Washington for the, with the Urban League during that time. Yeah. Did sit-ins when she was growing up. And so to grow up around a table where you had these two parents who, or my father would be like, boy, don't walk around this house like you hit a triple. You were born on third base. Yeah. Uh, so much of what you have was paid for by the sweat, blood, and oh, tears yeah. of your ancestors. Absolutely. And you can't pay it back. He would tell me, you got to pay it forward. I love that. Now, if elected, you would be the first unmarried president in a long, long time. Well, there was one before. The, the, the swearing in is until uh, the 21st of January 2021. That's you right. You never know what might happen between <laughs> That's now right. and That's right. Yes. Because you are seeing someone. I am. And it's someone very famous. It's somebody very special. Very special. And uh, I don't want to embarrass her because she's, she's looking at me right now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> she's looking at me. Uh, Rosario Dawson is here. And yeah. she's uh, in the audience. Yeah. OK, so you were inspired to public service by your parents, who taught you to uh, pay it forward. Yeah. Where's your father from? My dad grew up uh, uh, really tough to a single mom in the mountains of North Carolina, a small town called Hendersonville, love Hendersonville. Yeah. And his story really is a story of the power of community because his mom, grandmother couldn't take care of him. This amazing family, now like my family, the Pilgrim family, brought him in, treated him like a son. He, you know, he, he had no vision of college, but it was a small black church that said you were going to college, took a collection so we can enroll in North Carolina Central University. All my dad's life is a testimony, not just to his hard work and grit, but he would say that, that we are all, this family, you are the result of a conspiracy of love, mm. of those small acts of kindness from others that changed the destiny, the arc of my family's uh, trajectory. And most people, again, they, they don't realize that one extended hand on, in one day, mm. you can change the life. In fact, moving into the town I grew up in, all white town, we were the first black family to move in, as my dad called us, the four ra raisins in the tub of sweet vanilla ice cream. <laughs> and, and, and my dad- Wait, say that again. Uh -oh. The four- Raisins in a tub of sweet vanilla ice cream. Oh my goodness. And, and, <laughs> but you know, they wouldn't sell the home to my parents. They wouldn't. The real estate agent wouldn't. So a volunteer white couple, they posed as my parents, this group of people, activists, mostly white, said, no, this is not who we are as a yeah. country. Yeah. And it, literally on the day of the closing, the white couple didn't show up. My dad did, and a volunteer lawyer, and, and, and the real estate agent was still not willing to give my father the house. He stands up, punches a lawyer in the face, sticks a dog on my dad, and trust me, as I was growing up, every time my dad would tell the story, the dog would get bigger. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, boy, I had to fight a pack of wolves to get you in this house. <laughs> but, but so imagine me as a teenager, 
my, my dad would be like, you have to understand, you are here because of the kindness and decency of others. Yeah. And so my father had, he's like, uh, when you went to Stanford, Oxford, Yale, my dad was not impressed. He's like, life is not about the degrees you get, it's about the service you give. Mm, and, mm. And, and so you've got to show who you are. And so when I, my first job out of law school was moving to Newark, New Jersey, inner city, low income area, the neighborhood I still live in, the only United States Senator lives in a neighborhood where we don't confuse wealth with worth. It's a low income neighborhood, polo poverty line, but it's an amazing community. And I moved there to start fighting for people's housing rights because people fought for my housing rights. That's right, that's and, right. And I went back when I became a senator to find the people that helped my family move in. Because mm. I had never done that. I was writing a book and I had to fact check my dad. I mean, how big was that dog? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I found this man, the lawyer who organized everything. And he said he made the decision one day when he was sitting on his couch watching, Selma, watching the, the the, the, the bloody Sunday, he said on, on the news, he saw people on a bridge, Edmund Pettus Bridge, getting beaten. Mm. And he said, I have to do something, but he couldn't afford a plane ticket to Alabama, couldn't close his business. But he just said, hey, look, I don't have to solve the world's problem, I'm just gonna do the best I can with what I have, where I am, and went on to help represent black families. Literally, one man, What's his sitting name? on a couch, Arthur Lessman. Arthur Lessman. Yes. Look, give Arthur Lessman a big round of applause. Yes. In fact, I, I challenge everyone in this audience and everyone watching at home to do to follow Arthur Lessman's lead and do the same thing in your community because yeah. that is what's going to change this yes. world. It's going to change the whole pH balance of this world, and it really starts with you. Now, somebody told me you live in your brother's basement. No, no. Wait a minute. Hold up now. No, 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 no. I have a. I have a. I, I, I lived in the projects in my neighborhood for almost a decade, like eight years and it was considered one of the tougher neighborhoods in our state. And the, the people that got me into politics, which were the tenant president of that building and activists, literally made uh, Miss Jones, Miss Virginia Jones was her name, she said to me, we're gonna elect you to city council, but don't leave the community. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed in the community when I became a mayor, when I became a United States Senator. That's why I say, I'm so proud of my community. You walk into the capital of the United States of America, walk into my office, you'll see a map of that first neighborhood that took a chance on me. Mm -hmm. I live in a country where my neighbors work longer hours than my parents, but some of them need, still need food stamps to make ends meet because we've stripped the dignity from work in this country. Mm. We, my kids in some of my schools drink out of bottled water because we have a nation where there are 3,000 areas in America that have, the children have twice the blood lead levels than Flint, Michigan. And, and, and so these are the kind of things, staying grounded in the community where you see good people fighting against odds that are stacked against them, not of their own making. A criminal justice system that, as Brian Stevenson says, treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think what you are about and this show is about is so special to me because the first time I saw you advertise this show, you came out and you talked about love. Now, that's not a sentiment. That's not a feeling. That is action. It is sacrifice. Patriotism, in fact, is love of country. And you cannot love your country unless you love your fellow countrymen and women. And love says, love says that if your kids don't have a great public school to go to, then my kids are lesser off. Yeah. If your kids are discriminated against or beaten just because of who they are, it's an assault on my justice. Yeah. Love says we're all in this together. We need to stand up for each other, work for each other, and ensure that we each have pathways of dignity, of justice, of opportunity. And, and to me, that's what we need in America, is a revival of civic grace, is a deeper, more courageous empathy, and for us to get back on the road of a more beloved community where we, where we work, all of us commit ourselves to putting more indivisible into this one nation under God. Let the church say amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you talked about love. I, I, I was told that you write love poems. I do. Is, is that true, Rosario? I, it does, do. love poems. When do you have the time to do anything? When you have uh, somebody in your life that inspires you as much as she does. Really? Yeah, she, she inspires me. How do famous people meet one another? Um, we actually met at a, at a friend of ours uh, who was running for governor. Of, uh, of, of Maryland, Ben Jealous is his name, former head of the NAACP, mm -hmm. and, and we met at that party and she didn't give me the time of day. Oh, she did not. She, get, she threw you shade? She gave me serious shade. Uh -huh. she'll, she'll, she's denying it over there. Uh -huh. But then we re-met at another friend's party and, and months later, both of us were single at the time, and yeah. um, uh, it was a, a roof party of a, of a, of a dear friend and, and I had the courage to walk up to her and ask for her phone number. And how long ago was that? Like uh, seven, eight months ago. Yeah. Seven or eight months ago. Yeah, yeah October. 
And, okay, yeah, we get a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all so happy for you because you deserve the best. You know, I can feel your heart. And even before I met you, you stand out as what America is really all about. Well, I want to tell you how happy I am, honestly, that you, are, you have a show. But I, what I love about you is you know some of the lessons I learned from people in Newark, that life is about purpose, not position. Life is about significance, not celebrity. You are a person every day, your whole career, You've, been, you've, you've spent time in your life, people talk down to you, people talk about you, but you just don't care. You, you were one of these people that says, I'm gonna shine my light no matter what I have to do. And on some days, you know, the darkness may be enveloping me, but I'm gonna shine on. And now that God's given you this platform, uh, you are spreading that spirit, and we need that, and I'm grateful for you. Very kind, thank you. Thank you, Senator Booker, we'll be right back. That's very sweet. You got? I have three. What? Yeah. Are you the father of them all? I am the father of them all. <laughs> He's part of the first family of reality television. Can you believe the Osbournes premiered 17 years ago? That's crazy. Please welcome Jack Osborne. <laughs> Yeah. I'm good. How you doing? Well, you know, you've been going through it these past few years. A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. But, hey, that's what life is about. Exactly. Isn't it? it is not an easy ride for yeah. anyone. <laughs> and especially if you grow up on television. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How, can... how old were you when the Osborne started? Uh, I was 15. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that one of you, I think your sister Amy, chose not to be a part yeah. of the show. Do you, do you, was she the smart one in that? Um, she would probably say yes. Yeah. Uh, I might disagree. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> were you, all the kids asked, do you want to do this? Well, yes and no. Like, well, obviously, we was, I was still living at home, so it was Kelly, but Amy had actually moved out already. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of a thing where she was like, well, I'm not moving back in, and I don't want right. to do a show anyway, so. That was that. Are you friends with your siblings? Yeah, yeah. Are there other ones other than the three of you? Yeah, my, my, I have a half brother and a half sister from my dad's first marriage, and okay. they're much older. Are you friends with them? Yeah, 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 we speak, yeah. I mean, they live in England, so I don't see them as often as I'd like, but, you know. And I remember seeing a special on your mom, and your grandfather was a big showbiz bigwig. Yeah. And he managed lots of people. Who were some of the people he managed? <sighs> Man, he managed like ELO and like a Oh my tons God, of, like... I love ELO. Yeah. Do you like, do you like I their like music? I like ELO, yeah. Oh my and, God. I mean, that's, I mean, he brought, um, I think he brought Little Richard to England and really? like he was responsible for bringing a lot of the kind of original black rock and roll artists from America to Britain in like the 60s. Yeah. So he was kind of a pioneer in that sense. And he so... was also kind of a, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, most people in show business are. This is true. You know. Yeah. And, uh, and you, of course, growing up in show business, what was it like having Ozzy Osbourne as your dad? Well, the funny thing is, I, get, I guess the quick answer is, I don't know what it's like yeah. not to. Um, yeah. But, you know, my dad has, you know, who he is on stage and when he's in front of a camera is not who he really was at home. You know, when yeah. he was at home, he wasn't working. So he was very just kind of placid and he just kind of did his own thing. And mm -hmm. it's not like he would have a nine to five job. So it, it was very kind of, I don't know, just normal yeah. in a weird way. Who in your family are you most like? I probably am on a day to day, I'm probably most like my mother, but I got all the bad tendencies from my dad. Really? <laughs> like what? I don't know, the whole like, addiction thing. Yeah. yeah. That and how long have you been sober? 16 years. Wow. Wow. And you know, we talk about addiction a lot on, on this show. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been sober almost 20 years. Wow, yeah. awesome. And, uh, you know, what I learned about myself in that is that um, I, the, the addiction was the symptom of a much deeper oh, issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my big issue had to do with, I didn't know how to process my feelings. Yeah. What, 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 uh, what, what you, your addiction was the symptom of what? You know, I mean, in recovery, you know, they talk about it's that threefold disease, you know, it's the, the mental obsession, the physical allergy, and the spiritual malady. And for me, it, it 
very much falls into that. Uh, I think um, I was born a certain way. I react physically different to, um, I guess, really anything that takes me out of myself. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I can check out with it, I become addicted to it, whether yeah. it's you know, video games or food or gambling or whatever, like I will, I will be like, cool, that's it. That's yeah. how I turn reality off. Yeah, so how, how do you practice staying in the moment? It's very hard. I think it's even, I think it's harder now uh, at 16 years because now I can just check out on a phone. Mm -hmm. I tend to, tr you know, be a, make a conscious effort to like, all right, put the phone down. Um, you know, I do a lot of things with my kids, which I really enjoy and that uh, kind of grounds me. How many kids you got? I have three. What? Yeah. Are you the father of them all? I am the father of them all. <laughs> Yeah. My goodness, how, when did all of that yeah, happen? My, my God, God. That's, uh, are they all girls? They're all girls. Oh my God, you I just got the, start a girl group. I got, I got the player's curse. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. What are their ages? Uh, so Pearl is seven, uh, Andy is about to turn four, and Minnie is uh, 16 months. My goodness. All right, so we'll talk more about this when we come back <laughs> with more Jack Osborne. <laughs> back with Jack Osborne. You've got a television show. I do. What's it called? It's called Portals to Hell. Oh my goodness. Right? It's the feel-good hit of the summer. Yes, it, it sounds like a laugh <laughs> riot. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do on this show? Uh, so it is a uh, paranormal investigation show where uh, I and uh, my co-host Katrina go and investigate some really uh, twisted places. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes, I guess the, the short answer would be yes, but I don't think ghosts are what we uh, really think they are. What do you think they are? I think it has to do with some weird quantum physics, like astral kind of stuff. It's kind of heady, what I think. I think it's sort of an energy, residual energy, uh, residual energy. Yeah. yeah that, that makes ch changes. But it's what's interesting, especially when we were talking about uh, addiction and the ego earlier, in that the idea of a ghost is someone who doesn't know that they're dead, yeah. you know, and they're, they're stuck in this one place and they can't move to the next place, which is very much like an addict. Yeah, yeah, you know? I wonder if all the ghosts are actually just addicts. Maybe they are. <laughs> Maybe they're just lighting up, they're you just know. Like, I don't want to let it go, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I started this interview talking about your life and how it, it, things have been very tough recently. You yeah. were diagnosed with MS. Yes, I was, yeah. When did that happen? Uh, that was in, I think it was May of 2012. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What, um, what was the first thing that went through your head when they told you that? I would, well, the first thing was, um, like, really? Like, come on. Yeah. And then the second thing was, well, why did I even bother getting sober? Mm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that went away pretty quick. Um, and I don't know, it just kind of, I, my daughter had just, my eldest daughter had just been born. So I didn't really have a lot of time to sit there and, like, you know, enter the whole woe is me cavern mm -hmm. and just be like, oh, this is it, the end mm -hmm. is near. Um, I had a little three-week-old baby to take care of, and it really was a bit of a saving grace. What do, what do they give you for it? What, do they give you drugs? Yeah, so that, there's like 19 treatments available now, which is amazing, because 25 years ago, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. They gave you Advil. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so it's really coming leaps and bounds as far as research and new, new stuff kind of coming down the pipe. So have, I'm, you f have you felt any symptoms? Um, yeah, so I've been pretty good for a few years. You know, I, I got on a really good treatment that... My, I respond to really well. Um, I exercise a lot. I try and eat, eat properly and healthy. But and does that have an effect on it? Yeah, because at the end of the day, MS is inflammation. It's like essentially, it's inflammation. And so the thought process is, you know, if you have a diet that is a very kind of low inflammatory diet, it just doesn't give your body the opportunity to kind of inflame. What are low inflammatory foods? So it's uh, low sodium, low fats, nothing. I mean, it's basically like really lean proteins, a lot of vegetables, um, very, you know, minimal carbs. If you are going to have carbs, like the healthy stuff, like, you know, quinoa and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so is it normal for someone at 26 to, to find out? Yeah, well, it's... So the average age for diagnosis is between 20 and 40. Most people... Um, up until actually kind of recently, it, it was you didn't get diagnosed too much later because doctors didn't really, they weren't that queued up to the symptoms of MS because they're so varied. 
uh, you know, people would go years without being diagnosed because doctors just wouldn't put the pieces together. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting for uh, the lifetime of, of a human on this planet and the, the obstacles that you have to uh, work and navigate around. What have you learned about yourself through the trials and tribulations of the life of Jack Oswald? Right. <laughs> what have you learned? Um, I think for me, it's just, just, just keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I always, it, it, for some reason, it always kind of jumps into my head. But in Finding Nemo, when it's like, just keep swimming, just yeah. keep swimming, like, you'll figure, like, everything is meant to be the way it is because that's what's happening. Yeah. Like, if the moment I start kind of future tripping or living in, like, oh, well, you know, it should have been like this, right. it's, you, you've, you've lost. Well, they say if you have one foot in the future and one foot in the past, you are pissing on the present. This is so true. You know, and you have to stay, yeah. stay present. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thank now, you. Portals to Hell is airing now on the Travel Channel. We'll be right back. Michelle Visage is here for a little what's the tea? What's on tap for today? So we're gonna talk some hot summer trends. Okay. Okay, because right now there's something coming back that for me is quite disturbing, and I don't know if you'll agree or disagree, and that is the bicycle shorts with blazer combination. Yeah, oh. no, I can't get with it. I oh, just can't okay. do Why it. Why not? Why don't you like it? Because there's not one person that looks good in bike shorts, in my opinion. It's a horrible length. Yeah. If you have to start worrying about putting spanks and things under it, then that's just another level. It just brings me, when I think blazer and bike shorts, I think Robin Fab, Millie Vanilli. That's what I think straight and away. The, and the problem with that is. Well, that was a while ago. <laughs> well, actually, Michelle used to date one of them. I'm not gonna say which one. Yeah. Uh huh. True story. But this is the thing. I, I, with with um, uh, Kim K there, if the jacket were more tailored, I would like it better. And I listen. I like a bike short because I do love a big, fat, juicy ass. Yes, but no. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but no. Because it's just. It's, to me, it's just never gonna. She does things, she gets stuff made for her, it looks good on Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Then we all run to Target and buy our version. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> you okay. know that's the truth. All right. Also, um, Kristen Stewart has done something that's got people chatting a lot. Now, I did it back in the day. She bleached her eyebrows completely out. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand. Look, look what it looks like. Oh, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. It's very Ziggy Stardust. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. really, really love it. And when I was a redhead, I used to do that. Mm -hmm. Blonde, you have to have black eyebrows. She just had to because right. Madonna did it. Yeah. But when I was a redhead, I bleached mine out and then dyed them red. You dyed them I red? I dyed them red because I wanted people to think that I was a real redhead. Oh, my goodness. You were devoted to that redhead, I weren't was. you? I was. Yeah. I, you know, I think in life you should do everything at least once. Yes. You know, I've bleached my brows before, and I've t I actually have tortured my brows. These are actually painted on. I don't have any eyebrows. They, um, they do come back after a few months. But you are so good at painting them on. A lifetime of painting brows, <laughs> darling. Yes. Do yeah. you use a pencil? I use a, just a little pencil. Um, uh, uh, like an eyebrow, like a thin eyebrow pencil? A thin eyebrow pencil. I do one stroke at a time. And uh, yeah, you know, but I got to tell you, eyebrows are the bane of my existence. They're so hard to do. What do you say? They're, they're cousins? Yeah, so they're not twins. They're sisters. Or they're not twins. They're sisters, yes. Uh, so are they sisters once removed? Well, sometimes. It depends who's doing it. <laughs> and you said you did them stroke by stroke. stroke I said they're a stroke of genius. Yes. You did a very good job. Very good job. And summer's upon us, right? Summer's here. Yes, summer's so here. So we think about the beach. We think about a tan, what to wear. And then there's always a product that makes you go, Hmm. <laughs> is this good or is this bad? So I have something I want to show you. Okay, this show me something. This is called the towel kini. This is it. Now we can probably, this is it, right? It goes like this. Here, I'll show you. Yeah. You do this, and then you do this, and then you put your head through it. Yeah. Right here. You know, okay. Like, like oh, this, which I'm not going to do. Right, except for the fact you're, then you're walking and you just plop down on your face to go, or you lay down. So it can, you can go oh, front or back. You're naked underneath? Yes, you're not supposed to be wearing well, anything under it. But, oh, right. it's kind of like a snuggle, but for the like beach. Like a snuggie for the beach. Yes, yeah. Except the tan lines are, are going to be very yeah. interesting. How much does that thing cost right there? The towel costs $199. Really? 
made by artist Aria McManus, yes. Huh. And um, she's also making a kid's version, which for me makes sense, because with the kids, you got to deal with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Trust me, there were many days that I wish I had a Tawakini. Well, $199, I can make one for you for cheaper. You just How can me. you do it? How oh. do you do it? A watch pair of me. scissors. Watch me. And an old towel. Oh, watch me. <laughs> yes. And now, Sam Mendez, you know who Sam Mendez is? You mean I mean, Sam Sean or Mendez. Sean? I'm thinking Sean. Of yes. Sean Mendez yeah. just announced recently, I remember reading this on social media, that he doesn't wash his face. What? Wait, what? Does it? Right. I know it's confusing. Does it's he kind of, wash other things? He washes everything else. Yeah. So people were really dumbfounded on social media and saying, how do you not wash your face? I mean, he's got incredible skin. He's got so great obviously skin. Obviously, that's yeah. a gift. Yeah. But can I just implore to this audience, I don't care what your age is, you are never too young to start taking care of your face. That's right. It is the first thing yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when, my, when I was 10 years old, you know, I've always washed my face and done all this. When I was 10 years old, my mother said, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. She was right. That's right. And, you know, I know if kids have uh, bad skin, acne and stuff, the first thing you got to check is if their pillow pillowcase is dirty. you got to clean your pillowcase and then go run, go take a bath. Or your piddle case. Yeah, Which your I'm piddle <laughs> case has got to be clean. Yes. It's no, but, you know, I, I can't imagine now, what does he do? do if he doesn't some people just get in the shower and he's not like doing the act of washing his face so let water run on it sure but he's just not sitting there like i'm with the clarisonic and i'm with yeah. this and that and you know you know i do i i floss every night but i don't wash my face before i go to bed now, of course if i'm wearing makeup i do wash my face but if i'm so not when wearing... do you wash it in the morning I, in the shower i wash it in the shower see i wash it at night to me before i go to bed it's the whole prep and prime and then lay down like this yes Oh yes, God. like Mommy Dearest. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. We'll be right back. <laughs>Bar. Now, my personal glam team is here to teach you two of this summer's hottest trends. Give it up for Curtis and Raven. Yeah. Right. Let's start with Curtis here. Now, Curtis, what you got, baby? Well, what we're going to do is do some um, fun and messy buns for summer. Okay. okay. Or up in the club. Or up in the club. Okay. So what we're gonna do, I think everybody that has long hair has worn a ponytail, right? Yeah. So we're gonna pull it all the way up to the top of her head. Come on, ponytail. Yeah. Come on, ponytail. Yes. Okay, we, we wrapped the ponytail holder around the ponytail twice. So it stays in. So it stays in. Okay. And then you twist it one more time. Yeah. And you do like a half bun. That's when we get the face lift. That's right. Oh. Yeah. And you take what's left of the ponytail and you wrap it around the bun. Uh-huh. And you get a little hairpin. Okay. And then, I love these little bubbles at the top, so don't try to make them perfect. Very cute. This and way. Easy. And very easy. This way. What do you guys think? I We're done. love it. That's gorgeous. There's a oh, messy bun. That's a messy bun. I love a messy bun. That's fabulous. All right, what do you have that's messy, Raven? <laughs> we are going to do lips today on these two lovely ladies who we just met a second ago. Okay. We go way back. Way back. I'm Joanna. And? Tandisha. Since Tandisha has this beautiful shade of mascara on, we are going to do a nice coppery, orangey, gold. Yeah, because the, the bluey thing goes with the coppery They're thing. They're opposites on the color wheel. That's what looks good together, and it's always worked. All this stuff is from Sephora. Yes, and, uh, from our friends over at Sephora. And Ooh. so, oh, you're going to use lipstick? Oh. Around her eyes? No, on her no, lips. No, on her lips. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to mix 35 yeah. and 51. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're going to take... So you're bit mixing of, those two. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the orange down first. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we're just going to put a little bit of the, okay. the gold okay. shimmer in oh, the center. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's really pretty. But that looks beautiful. That's gorgeous. Can you get a good shot of her? It's Look really how gorgeous pretty. that is. Beautiful. Now, what are you going to do for this lady here? What's your name again? Joanna. Joanna. You've jo got a great voice, Joanna. Anna. With mm -hmm. Joanna, she's got this beautiful green Dress on. I love that. Yes, and we have this beautiful shade of purple here. Oh, purple, purple rain. Oh, and you. This <laughs> color is number 
50. Number hey. 50. Okay. So when yes. you go into Sephora, ask for number 50. Okay. Number 50. That sounds good. Because that's Sephora brand, isn't it? This is Sephora yeah. brand. Everything yeah. here is from Sephora. Fantastic. Okay. Fair brand. Yes. And I have to tell you, Sephora's brand liquid lip that we have right down in the front has some really beautiful reds and orange yes. reds. They are gorgeous and they last. Well, it's funny because just earlier I was asking someone uh, what lipstick they're wearing, which I am prone to do. Yes. And they said it was from Sephora. That's and it. it was this beautiful shade of red. Now, uh, uh, colors, I like to, I say all the time, use all the colors in the crayon yes. box. That's These what are you are here on this earth. planet to do. Okay. And that's what, that's what, that's what what your maker wants you to do and is you know use what? it all. You're paying for this. You go into the, the store, you go into Sephora, anybody that loves it, I have teenage daughters, you go in there, you're buying the product. Use it you're for like, whatever you want. You want. Yeah. Yes. Get double duty out of Why it. Why not? Now, you chose this purple to counterbalance the gorgeous sort of, what, but is that a teal green? It's, it's like a deep teal, yeah, yeah. beautiful. And that is what you're doing. So you want to use a color that's gonna bring out what you're wearing. Okay, now, uh, wh while Raven finishes that up, and you can see how beautiful it's turning out, mm -hmm. we're gonna take a break, so we'll be right back after this. <laughs> hey, thank you, everybody, but before we go, let's get our top tip from Curtis over here. Well, when summertime comes, it's going to be hot and muggy, you wanna keep the hair out of your face and don't be too afraid to be, have fun with your ponytail and your, um, your bun. I Just, love that, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Top tip, Raven. When it comes to makeup, there are absolutely no rules. Have fun with it, enjoy it, and uh, go out and be fierce. Okay, I love that. <laughs> now listen, uh, let's take a look at our home sleigh of the day. Now it comes to us from Lynn and her daughter, Emma, who watches us on Fox 2 in San Francisco. Let's see those go. Oh, look, slay it, ladies, slay it, yes. <laughs> I love it. Now enjoy this summer day and come see us again, maybe tomorrow, okay. Bye. A little bit of love.